Last week we began construction on the Dream Recreation Pond here at Camp Kennan and the response was awesome. Today the work continues as we build a man-made wetland filter step by step. Check it out. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennan. When we last left you, I had to cut down a literal ton of telephone poles, and here's the reason why. So that we could create a large retaining wall for the wetland filter being built today. If it looks like a lot of work, it's because it is a lot of work. But at the end of each day, we are left with a tremendous satisfaction for everything we have accomplished. So this is basically the workhorse of the rec pond. What's up guys? Uh, still hanging out here. These guys have been busting butt. Um, right now, Ed and the rest of the crew are putting in the bog filter or wetland filter. And this is really something that Ed uh, came up with and developed. And there's so much that goes into this uh, to make the water uh, perfectly clear for us to swim in, uh, for the fish, for, for this ecosystem to really take shape. And uh, right now, Let's look at what they've excavated. What's up, Ed? Um, hey, what's going on? Well, we're really interested. Everyone who watches the channel loves to see things get built. They love to understand what's happening here. So what have you done and what are these components gonna be doing for my pond? Okay, so what we did, we leveled off the bottom. So okay. we have a nice level bottom. We're within an inch all the way around. Wow. Um, then we carved into the bottom of that. So once we had that nice flat surface, we carved a channel to accept the centipede modules. Check this out, guys. These are the centipedes. They got great names. So talk to us, what, what are these gonna be doing? So what this is gonna do is you see right over here, this is the incoming point for the water coming from the pump. It's a three inch connection. We're gonna have high velocity water coming inside of here. It's okay. gonna be probably flowing seven feet per second or so. So that's pretty wow. fast. So it's gonna blast inside of here and we have a 93% reduction in water velocity. Okay. So what we do is we slow that water way down um, and then the, well, let's flip one of these guys around so you can see the other end. See how it's, it kind of has this flat bottom. This chamber down here uh, is designed for sediments. Okay. So the bigger stuff, so the heavier sands and things like that will accumulate down in the bottom. At the end of it, we have our snorkel vault. So this is going to connect up to this guy. We'll be putting all the stuff in here in a few minutes. Oh, but, really cool. But this is going to attach onto here. So what this does is once a year, you open this lid, put a pump inside of here, and okay. you can remove all that sediment from the bottom. And what the cool thing about this, guys, is all that sediment is so nutrient rich. So what I want to do is plant a really cool area yep. and use it as fertilizer. So everything gets recycled. Everything has a purpose. I mean, once a year, maintenance on this pond is nothing what is a pool <laughs> a pool is pretty you got to hire the pool boy oh then gosh. you got to worry about mom and the pool by pool boy <laughs> hanging out which ain't good for dad so we want to make sure no pool boys no. are coming to this house i'm the pond boy and i don't mind putting this pump in here kate i don't know where she is she's at work but we're not gonna have any issues uh anyway i went off on a tangent guys <laughs> i watched a little too many uh too many what is that cinemax movies years ago <laughs> anyhow Anyhow, folks, talk to me. So we, we put a sump pump in yep. here. It's great. We can get that nutrients out to the plant life around the perimeter of the pond or wherever exactly. I choose to discharge it. Yeah. Um, you developed this, didn't I did. you? I yeah, did, yeah, yeah. Uh, about 20 years, almost 20 years ago now. So here's what's cool, guys. You're often talking to me, people ask me, oh, how do we get involved in animals and this and that? Yep. And I always say, listen, I didn't go a traditional route where I went to college. Um, I kind of got into broadcasting. I went to communications in college for about two years. Um, you are an actual uh, marine biologist. I have a degree in zoology and I specialized in limnology, which is the study of freshwater ecosystems. So look at that. So <laughs> if you guys are really into this, um, this is, I mean, you're living the dream, wouldn't you say yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he made a mention at dinner the other night that he was doing data collection and testing for different uh, harmful chemicals in water, working in the lab, and he was slowly going insane, right? <laughs> Exactly. He chased down Greg the pond guy and they've been together 
how many years now? Uh, this will be my 26th year with Greg. Wow. So some of you guys out there, you have the passion for animals. We need more brains like, like Ed out there. We need people to develop things that are gonna make habitats more sustainable yep. to bring nature into our backyards. That's always been my passion is how I can I live amongst the animals? How can I create habitat for the animals I love? And that's what we're doing with their help. So uh, this is really amazing stuff. Will yeah. this sit at the center this of this? This is gonna sit at the far end. Oh, let's, let's yeah, see. So there's a, there's a, re a bigger area you see over here. Okay, oh, I see. Oh, so, so there's two snorkels on Two this. of them. Oh, that's awesome, man. We're doubling the oh, power. Oh yeah, well, we, we made sure. So what we have is we basically have 25% of the surface area of your pond is the filter. So calculate the entire, you got about a thousand square feet of water. So this is 400 square feet. Wow. Look at that. Well, it has to be because it, at, at one time, I mean, how, how do you know? I mean, I'm sure you know how long will it take, let's say, how much flow rate goes in here. What I'm trying to say is how much time will it take for this entire volume of water to get recycled? To um, get cycled through? Oh, gosh, we'll probably be turning this over um, in a day, probably eight six to eight times a day six to eight times a day yeah. the pumps are going to be working on this yep. um this the water will go through this this uh wetland filter correct yeah, wow. yeah. so okay so we got the, the centipedes we got yep. the snorkels yep. now we got to put these aqua blocks well we got to get the liner in first okay. so we just have our fabric right now yep the geotech cell we're going to put the big rubber liner in here that's going to hold the water in place then we'll put another layer of this fabric on top to protect it okay we put those centipedes in we got to get a couple stubs of pipe coming up that's gonna to connect to our pump. And then what we'll do is we'll take those aqua blocks and lay across this entire bottom. Now, what are the aqua blocks doing? What's their, what's their actual purpose? Um, will, they, will they be filled with rock or no. are they just, they're an empty chamber? It's basically, we're creating a false bottom okay. along the entire bottom of this filter. Okay. So the water comes in, it's gonna go out of that centipede um, for each one of those sections five and a half feet long, we're gonna have a flow rate of between 1,000 to 1,500 gallons per hour per section. Okay. So this line right here has three of those pieces. So we're gonna need 3,000 to 4,500 gallons per hour to discharge through this trench. Oh. So then what happens is the water comes up, it slows down, then it's gonna start making its way horizontally across the entire bottom. Okay. That allows the really, really fine sediments because now we go from, we have an, an initial 93% reduction in water velocity. Then we have an, a, on top of that, a 97% reduction in water velocity. So, it so just now it continually slows it just down. So each one of those aqua boxes is nine and a half inches tall. Okay. With the flow rate that we have, it's gonna take the water 10 minutes to fill up through that aqua block. Okay. 10 minutes. So now it's gonna it's gonna really slow. But the way those things are designed, it's 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 a it's called a matrix, right? So if you look at those things, we'll bring some of those over. But it has webbing and it has internal panels inside of it. That has been developed because what we want to do is we want to break down the laminar flow. So laminar flow is when you have a mass we have, volume of water okay. and it just is moving. What we're trying to do is mimic nature. So by having all those little matrix things, when the water comes out, it actually creates little micro eddies and turbulence inside of there. And that mixes the water and it further allows the sedimentation sediment to process down. to occur. That inside box is also gonna become home to different types of microorganisms. There's gonna be an entire ecosystem inside of the filter. Yeah. I mean, you're talking nematodes and tardigrades and rotifers and cool stuff. Get out stuff of here, man. That tardigrades? Are gonna be yes. They can live on the moon. I'm gonna have exactly. moon. They can live in space. We're gonna have tardigrades. Tardigrades, people. I'm a tardigrade farmer. How awesome. The water bear. Yeah. I love that. What, moss piglets, water bears. Yeah, that's so cool, man. So, exactly. so basically, guys, it's, you know, we're not just providing habitat for animals we can see. We're providing habitat for the real workhorse yep. of the universe. And I got to tell you, a little fact, okay? I hang out with another marine biologist, my friend Larry Wood. We get into some cool conversations. Yep. Most people are only, uh, we only experience what we can see yeah okay life on earth is so much more diverse than we give it credit for in fact multicellular organisms are actually only at the tip yeah. of the pyramid yep. there is a whole base of unicellular organisms that live in their own universe here on earth that are doing things that we don't even know about that are going through generation after generation in a blink of an eye. Yep. So it's really cool to just stop and think about what's happening and that we actually have that going on here is pretty impressive. So yep. that slow water rising yep. is also gonna allow the sediment to come down, but allow the next section 
of the uh, filter to work. So then we're going to have different, we're going to have three different layers of okay. river rock on top of the aqua blocks. So we have 24 inches of river rock. So we're going to have three eight inch lifts. They're going to have bigger stuff on the bottom, three to five inch size. Then it'll go down to one and a, two, one and a half to two inch gravel and then three quarter inch on the top. So what happens is, so we have that water. I said it takes 10 minutes for the water to flow yeah. up through that aqua block. So now what we do when we have that all that gravel bed, we have uh, the interstitial spaces has dropped down dramatically. So now the water velocity starts going faster and faster as it goes up through cool. those gravel layers. And what that does is it prevents it from clogging. So huh. sediments get down on the bottom and then it kind of blows out of the top because the water, water is gonna speed up through it. And then all that gravel, uh, each and every individual piece of gravel, we come home to different types of microorganisms. And Very what we're cool. gonna do is we're gonna, is we'll seed it. So just like probiotics people yep. take and stuff like that for, for your gut health, it's the exact same thing. We're gonna put probiotic bacteria inside of this thing and they're gonna totally live inside of all of this stuff and they're gonna break down nitrogenous compounds, different things from, from the waste from the animals that are gonna be living inside of here. These guys, waste from one animal is food for another. For another. So we're basically creating a home uh, for different little microorganisms, animals, copepods, rotifers, tardigrades, all that cool stuff, different types of bacteria that are going to consume and feed off of all that stuff, which is going to detoxify the water and give us pristine water quality. And then at the very end of it, guys, we're going to have plants on top. Yep. Their roots are going to go down and continue to aid in that filtration. So it's a perfect circle. It's, it's it pretty is. much. It's a cycle. Of... It's a closed loop. I mean, as best as you can, we, yep. we do have, there'll be outside uh, introductions, but this will be able to handle it. And all those little um, pebbles and stuff increase the surface area uh, a million fold. Exactly. I mean, it's incredible. Exactly. So yep. there you have it. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, show I, you guys. You have another question, I, well, Tom? Have one question. So for people who've never seen anything like this, what do you call this exactly? What is this exact this, whole the, thing The called? technical name for this is a constructed wetland filtration system. So we're bas we're mimicking a natural wetland. So the wetlands in our in our world. So we were driving yesterday, yeah. going to pick out rock, looking at all the natural wetland areas here in Florida. That basically is a sink for different types of nutrients. So runoff, pollutants come in, and these plants and organisms that live in these wet wetlands actually remove capture that. that stuff and remove it from the water system. And that's why we run into trouble with red tide here in Florida yep. because we have altered some of the water flow so it's not going through those natural filters and that's what's allowing some of the harmful uh, algae blooms to happen and in turn are, are making them, they're, they're a naturally occurring uh, situation, but it has been exasperated because of our intrusion into the coastal areas. Well, that's why I asked, because it's it, it's interesting to me, because, you know, people hear about we need to protect wetlands, and they, you know, no one understand. they probably don't understand why it's important. Now you understand what and wetlands, Absolutely. What, how important it is to the earth and to our local areas. To have those areas. protected areas is critical. That's why we need them. That's exactly why we need it. And actually, I've done big much bigger wetland filters than this for stormwater runoff. Sure. So we can capture water coming off of roadways and buildings. And, I'm, and this stuff is laden with all types of different stuff. I mean, we're talking heavy metals and uh, you know organophosphates and wow. pesticides and fertilizers and all that stuff. And it, be, it gets trapped inside of this. So the aquatic plants that you mentioned, um, you know, they bioaccumulate toxins. So they actually could remove uh, cadmium, lead, arsenic wow. out of the water. So they actually have a really unique uh, uh, capability. And what it does, it gets trapped in the root structures and in the plants and in, in, the, in the green part of the uh, plant. So now we're taking it out of the water and now we have it captured and now it could be recycled. It could be utilized, uh, you know, um, mulched and things like that. Cool. Yeah, it's very cool. There very you have cool it, everybody. We're, we're going to show you a few more of these steps here in the video. And I just wanted everyone to really uh, see that science can be sexy in certain ways and be <laughs> applicable for us folks that love animals and our backyard. So there you go. Thanks, Ed. I'll let you get back to All work. Right, sounds good. All right, everybody. Uh, we're going to leave you with some really cool B-roll of these guys working on this whole thing. And uh, if you have any questions, comment below, man. We'll make sure that the guys at Aquascape see those comments. Go check them out. Uh, you can find them online at aquascapeincorporated.com uh, online. And don't forget to join the Cam Kennan Army. Like and subscribe down there on our other channel. Like and subscribe for this video. Uh, go to Facebook. No, no, not Facebook. Instagram. Go to Instagram and follow along there as well for more content. And as always, join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cam Cannon for more original content and help us make videos that educate everybody about the world we live in and the animals we love. We'll talk to you later.
Yeah.